Anthony, you brought in the parents uh, to child. Uh, parents talk to uh, child about sex thing. Yeah, that's one of the uh, many educational films I was going through. You know how you're you're cruising around on the internet and you're just kind of you don't know how you end up at some place, but you're there. It's kind of one of those situations. I'm I'm going around and I ended up on this uh, film archive site. They had everything. You know, you want to see presidential uh, speeches from the past and stuff from NASA. And uh, all just American history, world history, actually. Mm -hmm. And uh, w one of these archives was um, educational and industrial films. There's uh, just a slew of them. So I'm checking them all out, and they had ones on um, perversion. And uh, there were whole films on, on how girly magazines and uh, men's fitness magazines cater to the homosexual. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let your child read these. You can turn into a homosexual. <laughs> Very angry at the homosexuals, and um, one of them was called "Boys Beware." We got that. We got to pull clips from that one. It's a uh, it's a whole thing on on how boys have to beware of homosexuals that drive around in cars trying to pick them up at the basketball court in the high school, <laughs> and they have these scenarios that play out, and it's so funny. Guy comes over and he <laughs> offers a boy a ride home, and the boy takes it and he gives him a gentle pat on the shoulder. Uh, uh, leads the boy to believe everything's going to be okay. <laughs> and, and, and then, like, uh, next weekend, he was back at the school driving Billy home. He decided to ask him if he wanted to go fishing. They went fishing the next weekend. This is where he showed Billy some pornographic photography. And he shows him pictures. And before you know it... uh they were walking up into a hotel room no. together, and he put his arm around what Billy. What was the excuse and he that goes, the homosexual used? If things happen, if things like this happen, be sure to tell your parents before it's too late. <laughs> and you're led to believe that the kid takes it right up the keister in the hotel by the the homo. But how did he get him up into the hotel room? He just talked him into it, and he talked him into it. And then the next scene is. Uh, Billy and his parents, with Billy with his head down, walking out of the police station. <laughs> Not being able to sit down. Billy finally told his parents, yeah, and you just know he was ravaged. What kind of good pedophile takes a kid out four times before he bangs him? Oh, I know. He was, like, dating this kid. <laughs> Whatever happened to a shallow grave after the first date? <laughs> oh, God. That was another one, uh, uh, which I, th I guess ended pretty quickly. A kid on a basketball court, and yeah. his friends left, and the kid wanted to play. You know, Johnny wanted to play a little longer. And this guy comes out and offers to play a game with him. And it's just this big, oafish old guy <laughs> with the, the horseshoe bald head and the glasses, and he's playing uh, basketball with the kid, and uh, he offers him a ride home. And he goes, little did he know he traded a little more time at the basketball court for his life. His life? His life. Wow. Was it? This guy was thorough. No dating and fishing for him. Yeah, this guy wasn't about waiting a month to see what the little boy had. It's hullala, hullala, shovel over the head. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Well, the, uh, those clips are coming. And there was no distinction in this between homosexuality and predator pedophile murder. <laughs> it was just, it was all, they were all grouped together. Yeah. The homosexual will prey on children. So we got parents. Uh... This is a little different. This is uh, parents being educated by these doctors um, on on sex, how to tell their kids about about sex, and a lot of it is played out in scenario and, All right, and the first uh, conversation. Clip is, Mommy talks about vagina. Yes, she does. Mommy, I want to ask you something. What is it, dear? I know that the baby goes inside you. That's where Johnny was. But he seems so big. What I wonder is, how does he get out of there? Oh. Your belly button? It's too small. Mary, the baby doesn't come out of your navel. Uh -oh. Let me tell you how it is. Oh, boy. There's a special opening yes. just in front of the place where you have your BM. <laughs> it's very, what? very tiny and a little girl. It's a special... Grow, oh, you it can't. Grows oh, sorry. It's a special opening uh, right in front of the... The hole that you have your BM. Your big moody from my bodyguard? <laughs> <laughs> How funny is that? Oh, and BM. you'll notice later in life that because you have that, it's the only reason men talk to you. <laughs> it is a special hole, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Because it's a special hole. Just in front of the place where you have your BM. It's very, very tiny in a little girl, but as you grow, it grows too. Right along with the rest of you. A slut. Until when you're grown up, it gets to be just about this size. 
Now, when the baby's ready to be born, it stretches up to be about this size. Holding her hands three feet apart. Just big enough for the baby to slip through, head first. Then, after the baby's born, it goes back to its regular size. No, it doesn't. You remember (laughs) how... Big, my tummy stretched when the baby was growing in there. Only if you have and a good doctor. See, I'm flat again. <laughs> I'm back to my regular size. Do you understand? Why does Daddy if beat you? So, but if I forget it, you can always tell me again. Maybe when Tabby has her kittens, you can see how they come. Ugh. I like that, but there's something else. How did the baby get started in this? Oh, oh boy. No. Oh, oh, no. Boy. Oh. Uh, Daddy comes home drunk from the office, <laughs> smelling of whiskey, and flips Mommy over. <laughs> Remember that special hole I was talking about? <laughs> Daddy doesn't treat it that special. <laughs> he makes it a BM a bloody mess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> the special opening that little girls have, the one I told you about, has a name, the vagina. Uh-huh. Now, you know that little boys like our Johnny have a penis. You see his penis when we change his diapers. Yes. <sighs> when a boy grows up and is ready to be a father... He is able to put his penis into the vagina, that special opening that mothers have. And when he does this, he can plant the seed that starts a baby to grow. Isn't this uh, little girl a little too young to to know this much? It's very wrong. It is very wrong when you watch it. The kid's much too young. Shut up. Go outside and play. The mother's leaving out the whole whole foreplay thing. The whole always, always hold the bag, honey. (laughs) You know, his mother stinks. <laughs> An awful lay. Oh. Put it in. You just know she lays there. Now put it in my special hole, dear. <laughs> Plant your seed. Oh, God, I'm going back to my secretary. You stink. <laughs> oh. All right, the next clip is about masturbation. Yes. Mm. Let me at this point make a clear-cut scientific statement. Masturbation is not harmful. The young child often plays with his genitals, And after puberty, masturbation is a common release mechanism for the sex drive. Growing boys will either masturbate to get rid of this energy or have a nocturnal emission, the so-called wet dream. Since sexual fantasies or dreams often accompany these experiences, the teenager will sometimes feel guilty or ashamed. What he needs right then is reassurance from his parents that they know these things happen and that the experience itself is not harmful to health or to normal growing up. Not important at all. It should be viewed as just a passing phase. <laughs> Last a lifetime. <laughs> to add to guilt by terrifying the teenager with fables and myths, or by giving the impression fables. that the genital areas are evil or taboo. taboo. These misstatements and misconceptions are the real dangers. Writing a song parody? <laughs> taboo. Is he doing a radio show with Anthony? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Tell him it's okay to put it wherever he wants. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's creepy, man. I, yeah. Thank God he wasn't teaching me that crap. No. Who's listening to that guy about exactly. masturbation? Ricky. Funky Treasure says, sometimes Daddy puts it where Mommy has her BM. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> yeah, these uh, these films are, are what really is BM funny. by the way? A bowel movement. Oh, okay. I don't know. That's an older yeah. older days term for going to the bathroom or taking a dump. BM. A BM hmm. or making poo poo or poopies as uh, they tell the kids. These Toolbag days. Johnson from New Orleans writes: Doesn't BM stand for bend movement? <laughs> Old gravy leg, dear. It's a, the special hole right in front of the place that makes you have gravy legs. <laughs> Uh, you're going to need club soda when Ricky comes back because we're running out yeah, of things to little, do. Getting a little short. All right, good. All right, uh, so the next clip is uh, the doctor talking about wet dreams, I guess. Is this... Uh, we really want yeah. the homosexual audio. Oh, yeah, we'll, we'll get to that. That's on this, the way? this is great stuff, though. All right. I, I love this Every stuff. Every so often I get a strong sex urge, and the only way I can take care of it is to masturbate. <laughs> and when I do, I feel awful. It's just like I've committed a crime or something. <laughs> and it worries me, and I say... Well, I won't do it anymore. And when I do, it goes away for a while. 
and I'd come back and do it again. <laughs> and when I do control myself for a while, I end up with a wet dream. <laughs> well, Jimmy Norton, what you have to do is <laughs> calm down. You're a sex addict. <laughs> Oh, gee, <laughs> like I committed a crime, Beef. I know, it sounds like, leave it to Beaver. You no, know, Wally, I was playing with myself last night, and I felt like a creep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't worry about it, Beef. Mom has to wash my sheets every hour on the hour. I'm jerking it all the time. <laughs> well, me and Lumpy went out behind in the, the house in the woods, and he was all lumpy in his pants. And... I won't even tell you what happened to Whitey. <laughs> it's all Whitey in my face. <laughs> it sounds like, because uh, it is from the same time. It's yeah. another 50s. So they get these whiny little kid. Oh, and I didn't know what to do. Yeah. Just grab it, crank it, go out. Have fun. Next thing you know, I'm feeding a hooker a bran muffin, laying underneath her, yelling, bombs away. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like a creep or something. It's okay to take logs on your chest. <laughs> Don't be embarrassed. All right. Oh, I can do this. Hold on. Oh, man. Uh, all right. Cool. Beaver! Beaver! Gee, I hope Dad doesn't come up here and catch me spanking the monkey, Wally. Oh, it's okay. Dad does it all the time. Mom doesn't like getting it in her special hole in front of the place she has her BM. So, is is this how you do it, Wally? Sure, Beef, just grab on and crank away. Everything will be fine. But what if I make a mess? That's what Mom's for, Beef, to clean up our mess. Sure, Beef, the men in the house make messes everywhere. Whether it's in that special hole or on the sheets like you boys. Mom will clean it up, because that's her job. It's the 50s. She's there to clean up our sexual fluids and to take my punches in the face when I'm pissed off from a day at the office. Now crank away, kids, and don't worry about the laundry. That's Mom's job. She also cooks a mean pot roast. <laughs> ah, isn't it nice to have someone to clean up your fluids and... Make a nice roast at the end of it all. It's the 50s, and it's wonderful. It's the, it's great. the 50s just seemed so great. Everyone was stupid. If you missed the 50s, move to Toronto. They're still living it. Are they? Oh, my God. Hey, I want to talk about masturbation, eh? <laughs> <laughs> a boot. A boot. Uh, put a boot in your dog's liver. <laughs> <laughs> What's this swimming naked clip? Oh, well, they're just discussing things, Sophie. <laughs> the adolescent boy has other problems, too. I'm talking about his problems in growth and development, which can be as disturbing to him as his sex pressures. <clears throat> boy, how do I always get the top locker? Two boys in the no, locker room. Junior team you're on look pretty good today. You guys better watch out. You might make the finals. Yeah, but we'd be a lot better if I were bigger. I'm sure getting tired waiting to grow up. It's no fun being such a scrawny kid. It may sound funny to you, but... Boy, when I change my pants, I'd like to crawl in that locker I feel so undeveloped. That's not so funny. Before we moved here, I used to go to a school where we had to go swimming in the bear. I was so embarrassed about the size of my penis that we used to dread the days we had to go swimming. Even though it was my best sport, I was good at it, too, like you. Boy, what I wouldn't have given for a fig leaf. For a Even big for a small schlong. Tree. Well, how do you think I feel? <laughs> <laughs> He's got a little dick. That is so fun. What school is he going to yeah. where they swim naked? Dude, we did this. Uh, we, we talked about stuff like this in the past, and a bunch of people came out of the woodwork saying that they were forced to swim naked in high school. Unbelievable that that was actually going on. They would swim naked? Could you imagine? <laughs> Gee, Dad, I, I feel a little embarrassed going swimming. I, I feel like a creep or something. I get in the pool and I got a little schlong. That's okay, Beaver. I had a little, little schlong when I used to go swimming, but look how big and thick and fat it's gotten. <laughs> Whoa, Dad, put that away. That's what your mom says. 
Right before I put it where she has her BM. <laughs> and then she just says, ouch, ouch. And she has to wash the sheets again. That's her job, you know. You know, Dad, sometimes when you go to work, Eddie Haskell comes over and, and Mom makes the same sounds in her bedroom that, that she makes when you're in there. Well, really? How about that, Beaver? <laughs> Eddie Haskell's becoming quite a man. <laughs> you know, someday, those girls at school are going to want you to put it in the special hall. And that's when you flip them over and put it in their balloon knot. <laughs> What's a balloon knot, Dan? Well, blow up a balloon, tie it in a knot, and look into where you just blew. What does that look like? Oh, I get it, Dan. The place where the BM comes from. Sure. <laughs> sure it is. God, the 50s rocked. <laughs> Wish I was there. Do anything you want. Here you go, dude. A Everything guy. is in black and white. Hold on, hold on. I gotta... Let's go to uh, Mike. Hey, Mike, what's up? Hey, what's up? Uh, we used to swim naked in school. Told you. Naked in school. All right, so you're what? You're 60 years old? 30, 36. 36. <laughs> I'm 36. Where, where were you swimming naked? Uh, we were in Chictawaga outside of Buffalo, New York. Oh, that makes sense now. And and what would they say? What was the first day you had to do this? What was that like? Um, it was like, uh, what the fuck? I, I got to get naked to swim with fucking 30 guys? And the teacher yeah, just said, take was, your clothes off? Yeah. He, they did not give us bathing suits, and we weren't allowed to wear bathing suits because they said that the soap clogged the filters or something like that. And, yeah. And uh, I know a lot of guys who all had to do it the same thing, and, I mean, it was, it was fucking weird. And uh, once I got <laughs> sure in high school was. and stuff, I was like, I ain't doing this anymore. I mean, what the, what the fuck? You play chicken with freaking a naked sack on your neck? You know, fuck that. Jesus. All right. Well, there you go. I told you, Aunt. I, I didn't know that was going it, on. In the this, logic of it is crazy, but... Uh, this day and age. Mike in Jersey. What's up, Mike? Hey, what's going on, guys? Hey. Hey, uh, you really pulled a boner this time, Beef. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> yeah, hey, some words this, take on different meanings. They Roman wrestling when I was in school. Don't be such a baby. Stop it. They did not. <laughs> I'm just joking. Yeah. yeah you take never, care, guys. You but never they, know, though. They did in the olden days do that. Not like really older, but in school they would have the kids wrestle naked. Come on. Ugh. No, no, no way. No, I, I, I read that. Mac, yeah. what's up? In one of those homosexual Opie, Opie, magazines. Kill the bit, man. They're new sponsors. Huh? <laughs> oh, yeah. Kill the bit. It's a new sponsor. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> very funny. Yeah, very good. That's very funny. Sure. All right, Anthony, the next clip is about uh, menstruation. Ah, menstruation. There's been a real change in our approach to education about menstruation. It's hard to believe what grandmother experienced, but let's hear her story. Here's grandma talking about it. <laughs> I'll never forget when I was 14 years old. I went to the little outhouse on our farm. Outhouse. My new dress was stained, and there was blood on my underclothes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, really, Granny? Sounds hot. Did grandpa put it where you be him? <laughs> Maybe it was red from slaughtering an American Indian, you rotten old bag. <laughs> We had just returned from a lynching when I noticed I was bleeding. <laughs> the front of my underpants looked like I was attacked with a bingo splatter. <laughs> Old copper panties. <laughs> oh, God. Oh. Oh. All right, wow. Blood on my underclothes. I ran inside and showed my mother. And all she said was, you're menstruating, and turned and walked away. I had to find out how to take care of myself from my cousin. Were any of your girlfriends told in advance by their mothers? No, I'm afraid not. They were just as scared as I was. Yeah. Laura and Ingalls, some of them all of them. sisters who told them. One thing I was sure of, I would never let this happen to my daughter. Why do you suppose your mother didn't tell you in advance? Ignorance. Just plain stupid ignorance. 
Oh, calm down, Granny. Jeez, she's got some mother what? issues. No kidding. I remember. And then this young Union soldier came by my house, and he had fired a shot. It went through his testicles and hit me in the ovary, and I was pregnant. <laughs> You can read about me on urbanlegends.com. What's dot .com? I have no clue. It's the 50s. Oh, my big bloomers just stained. Oh, That just sounds awful. Disgusting. That's funny, though. I was dirty. <laughs> well, here we go. A little discussion about sanitary napkins. Ah, here you go. Mommy, what's this? Well... I guess, honey, you're old enough now to understand these things. She's Those one. Are sanitary pads for me, honey. Yeah, really. Uh, mommy, what's this? Well, here you go. He takes his big schlong. <laughs> oh. Yeah, uh, let's start over. Hold on. Okay. Come on. Mommy, what's this? Well, I guess, honey, you're old enough now to understand these things. Those are sanitary pads for me, honey. You know that mothers have a special place inside them where the babies grow before they come out. Oh. Well, each month in a Wait, grown up what? woman, a sort of soft, nasty place builds up. Soft, nasty place or nasty place? <laughs> nasty? A or soft, na nasty place. That's how she's describing her womb. Oh. It's the 50s, though. She should be describing the outside of it as nesty. <laughs> <laughs> nasty and nesty. Looks like a vulture's nest out there. <laughs> oh, you just know it's big and awful. No hygiene going on down there. No. And a grown-up woman, a sort of soft, nesty place builds up. Hmm. And some of the nest is blood. And if oh. a woman is going to have a baby, she needs this nest for the baby to grow in. Unless now, Daddy let me kicks tell you her what in it. Pads are for. <laughs> if no baby has started there, then the blood in the nest isn't needed. And it just dribbles out of the vagina for a few days. <laughs> <laughs> and <then the> dribbles. <laughs> Sometimes mommy sneezes and stains the linoleum. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's awful. Do they explain crime scene sex? Dribbles. No, <laughs> no, no. And then a fresh new nest place starts building up. That's what the pads are for, to catch the blood. Does it hurt? It shouldn't. It's something that happens to every girl when she grows up. Now have a lucky. <laughs> You're old enough. Light up a lucky. Pop away, dear. What are you now, two? Here you go. It's lucky children's cigarettes. Smoke for your health. Mm. Now included with your dolly, a pack of Lucky Strike. Oh, soft, nasty, nasty. A lot of great instant feedback coming in, by the way. Big Dog from Texas. Ben didn't want to swim naked because his dong would drag along the bottom. <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, uh, I, I can't do impressions, but Funky Treasure from CringeHumor.net. Did you read this one? I'm not sure. He he, he 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 writes this a lot every morning. Wally, I saw Mom make a BM on Dad's chest last night. She <laughs> <laughs> <Gee>, Wally. <laughs> uh, uh. And then and then J Mac from. I don't want you to get scared by what you saw last <laughs> night, Wally. <laughs> Dad, it was kind of creepy. <laughs> Gee, Dad, I, I saw Mom squatting over you, and, and she, she was having a BM on your chest. <laughs> oh, Wally, although on the outside this might look odd, it's quite pleasurable when Mom drops logs on my chest. Oh, sure, we've done that ever since college. <laughs> it might stink a little, and, well, I don't tell the boys down at the office about it, but... It's perfectly normal. Maybe when you're out on a date, you could have a girl drop logs on your chest or, or face if you're a real trooper. <laughs> you know, it started years ago when I used to play Monster Rain with some of the boys in my neighborhood. Monster Rain, Dad? Sure, Wally. That's when you yell, Monster Rain's coming, and run under the porch, and all of a sudden we fillet each other. Hubble-la-la-la, <laughs> Ain't the 50s great? <laughs> Gee, I, I'm gonna go play that with Eddie Haskell, Dad. Sure, you go run off and play. 
<laughs> Monster rain. And grab a couple of luckies on your way out and puff away. I love the lucky strike. And striking your mom. Oh, it's the 50s, you know. So, so did we play the sanitary napkins one, sort of? Yeah, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, we got and, to And then J-Mac from Philly writes, Why does Ann have to tell everyone he isn't taking part in the gag? Why does he have to separate himself from the group all the time? <laughs> <laughs> I'm offended by it. All right. Um, Ann talks about uh, her period? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, let's get A this one period here. talk. Come on. And when did you first learn about menstrual periods? Oh, I really can't remember. I just always sort of seemed to know something about it, and I knew that I'd have them someday. I Her do voice remember, is awful. though. Knew that I'd have them. them. <laughs> like, I don't know where this accent is from, but it's horrible. It's it, nothing sexy about this. I knew I'd have them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When I started to develop, my mother reminded me that I'd probably be starting soon. And that's when she went into the sort of information that you gave in the animation. Not as clearly as that, but I felt I knew what the score was. And then she did a very practical thing. She gave me a belt and a pad, and I was all set. A Most belt of my and friends a pad. didn't do it this well, though. Among my friends, it really ran the gamut about what they knew and what they didn't know. A belt and, and a, a pad. Ah, oh, the good old days. Yeah, you buckle up like a fighter pilot when you have your period. <laughs> With a Gucci belt buckle. <laughs> <laughs> we ought to get pads and belts for him. <laughs> for Noah. Have him wear that around the office. <laughs> a belt and a pad. A pad and a belt. Nice. Any others? One more? No one ever mentions that you can wear two pads on a heavy day or that tampons Ooh. are all right, even if you aren't married. <laughs> what is that about? Well, you didn't want to put anything in there uh, if you're not married. Because then if you have a husband who's checking you out, you know, th some husbands would actually check out the woman and make sure she's intact. And uh, women were afraid that a tampon would break that and make her look like a slut to a husband who's uh, searching for a virgin. Well, Anthony, here's uh, another uh, clip on... Uh... Apple of Dad's eye. <laughs> <laughs> here's another clip on Anne's period. Oh, Apple, why would you bring him a computer? <laughs> Monarchy. <laughs> All right? Yeah. All right. No one ever mentions that you can wear two pads on a heavy day or that tampons are all right, even if you aren't married. The fact is, a lot of girls do get cramps in the first couple of days, and I know then I'm limited for some sports. You mean that what you really needed to know is that menstruation is a nuisance, but not something terribly unpleasant. To guys. Oh, I don't know. But after a few periods... A girl becomes very aware of some of these nuisance factors. Really, they're just inconveniences for the most part. Of course, it's nothing like it in my mother's day. Not nearly so restricted. You should hear my mother laugh about her high school gym class. Yeah. All the ladies who were having their periods had to get in their gym suits. Then they sit along the sidelines, radiating their attainment of womanhood and smugly enjoying their femaleness, while the rest of them whack the volleyball. Quick the volleyball. Ugh. What an accent. Yeah. Pids. I wear pids. <laughs> that is weird. <laughs> that is weird stuff. Right, they're all whacking a volleyball, and mom and her other friends are just there bleeding against the wall. <laughs> <laughs> bleeding against the wall. Oh, that is disgusting. <laughs> I love big, thick double pads on there. Dribbling out. Oh, <laughs> looks like Dracula with Down syndrome. <laughs> Dracula. Sometimes I'd have to wear two pads. <laughs> oh. It was pretty disgusting when I had to put on two pads. It's like I was wearing a diaper. <laughs> you know, a bloody diaper. <laughs> oh. You should tell your children about this so they're not embarrassed. <laughs> What an awful accent that was. Sometimes I wish I'd be sexually active, but not with this accent. <laughs> God damn it. I'm banging Sipowitz over here. <laughs> hey, come on. Put it in my ears. <laughs> come on, you lousy skill. <laughs> 
That's horrible. Uh, Warning your kids about pornography. And pornography. And how it's distributed. I was watching this with you at like 5 in the morning. and Yeah. And they said that pornography is being distributed through rapid transit. Rapid transit. Well, this was his whole pitch on how pornography is getting everywhere in the country. And it's uh, more prevalent now than ever, now being the wonderful 50s, uh, because of the mass distribution that is now allowed because of technology. Like rapid transit. And high-speed printing presses. Printing presses. Do they have and they show pictures of airplanes and trains, you know, scurrying along, uh, uh, bringing pornography to every corner of this uh, Trains are rushing uh, pornography from New York to San Francisco. Right. Well, probably from San Francisco to New York. Fag capital, San Francisco. <laughs> bringing their gay, homosexual pornography <laughs> To every corner of the country. Oh, this is about gay pornography? That's about all kinds of porno. Just any kind of porno. Girly magazines. He actually calls them girly magazines. <laughs> and worst of all, the pocketbooks, where he read a line out of it, uh, where people get their kicks from rape and murder. All right, let's listen to the first clip. Obscene literature is a $2 billion a year business. $2 billion. That's $2 billion. Through this material, today's youth can be stimulated to sexual activity for which he has no legitimate outlet. He is even enticed to enter the world of homosexuals, lesbians, sadists, masochists, and other sex deviants. Jimmy. <laughs> the psychiatric terms for these unnatural sex acts are unknown to most decent adults in our country. But through this salacious material, these abnormalities are corrupting the minds and the hearts of our children. Stupid minds. Perversion for profit. Per Perversion for profit. Psh, the Opie and Anthony show. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hear these being in every single show sweeper we ever do. Yeah. <laughs> Just end everything he says with Psh, Opie and Anthony. Perversion for profit. Perversion for profit. Wow, this guy's dead serious. Oh, huh? this guy could Woo! not be more serious. He's standing in this very 50s office setting with a map of the United States behind him with pins in it for some reason. You know, I guess where all the pornography is. And he's just angry at all this. Sorry, they're showing the forecast. And for Friday, it says very nippy. <laughs> <laughs> nippy. Why do the weather forecasters have to use such pornographic words like nippy or penisy out <laughs> why what does it mean here in colorado when it's going to be snatch like <laughs> i can't believe they just they had that for friday though nippy. very nippy a little nippy <sighs> bme <laughs> bm let's go to another clip here yes. they constantly portray abnormal sexual behavior as being normal mm. They glorify unnatural sex acts. They tell youngsters that it's smart, it's thrilling, it provides kicks to be a homosexual, <laughs> a sadist, and every other kind of deviant. It provides <laughs> kicks to be a homosexual. I don't know if that's quite a kick. Quick, yeah. <laughs> ow! <laughs> I'm not getting kicks. Oh, you're kicking the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> kicking, screaming, whatever else. Sure, it's a thrill a minute. It's a kick to be a bottom. <laughs> uh, when a big hog goes where you make a BM, it's kicks you'll be doing on the bed. <laughs> screaming, get off of me, you big burly bear with a sweet face. <laughs> Uh, oh, okay, that's sure. fantastic. Yeah. What's this clip about communists? What yeah. do the communists have to do with pornography? Because it was the and beautiful, porn. wonderful 50s. <laughs> Everything tied into communism. Even, the military. Gays. Hold on, sorry. Even gays, pornography, everything tied into uh, to the communists. The Military Kaplan's Association of the United States. Sounds like a fun Practically group. every major fraternal, civic, and religious organization. The juvenile court judges the Federal Bureau of Investigation, innumerable psychiatrists, sociologists, and psychologists attribute XM the moral management. decay among our people in very large part to the obscene and pornographic literature so prevalent in our society. This moral decay 
weakens our resistance oh. to the onslaught of the communist masters of deceit. Wow. <laughs> See, we're looking at porno. Yeah. And you turn your back on the commies who just march in <laughs> while you're spanking it to some big titted girly magazine. What a sure. What an idiot. He doesn't think the communists are spanking it too? While you have your hands wrapped around your Johnson, the commies are marching in hands wrapped around a rifle <laughs> to steal your sweetheart. <laughs> Well, they actually thought that Grandma was a communist when she got her period because her dress was red. <laughs> <laughs> Better dead than red, Granny. <laughs> She's wearing communist panties in the outhouse. You're throwing batches. The communists are throwing hand grenades. They'll be celebrating their holidays on the White House lawn while you're cleaning up with a tissue. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, uh... On the floor. Teen murders? <laughs> on the floor. Teen murders? Yeah, this sounds pretty serious. A five-year-old? Something about a five-year-old. It just says teen murders, five-year-old. Wow, this might be about some of the books that he was talking about, the pocket books that, that are uh, spewing this filth, not only pornographic, but violence and rape and, and other things like that. Okay. A young boy in Philadelphia raped and killed a five-year-old girl. And while he was testifying... That he had been stimulated to this heinous crime heinous. by reading a nudist magazine, a federal court judge in Washington was granting to that very same publication a second class mailing permit. Oh. Wow. Raped and killed a five year old girl. All they found was her little cowboy hat <laughs> <laughs> and little fake six shooters. <laughs> And very little boots. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's the clip you've been talking about: the evil homosexuals. The homosexuals. Homosexuals. <laughs> Think then of the consequences to the inexperienced youth who, in purchasing and studying this material, becomes a pawn for these misfits, these homosexuals. <laughs> who have a slogan that betrays the evil of the breed. Slogan. Today's conquest, they say, is tomorrow's competition. Oh, I thought it was going to be Jersey Governor. See the governor. tender age at which homosexuals <laughs> prefer their conquest. Mm. Look here at the young face yeah. and bright smile, which could be the hope of the world. Noah. <laughs> but in the other half of the picture is revealed the seduction of the innocent. Look at this poor young lad. But when looking, think of the others who might follow his perfidious footsteps when photos like these are available at the corner news rack. <laughs> what is the homosexual slogan? Tastes like shit. I'll have two. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, sure. Homosexuals. <laughs> Sexuals. The homosexual. Praying on this lovely young lad. <laughs> Calling him a young lad. Look at him in his sailor suit. Yeah. Crying as he spins in a circle in a brown paper bag in a stall in Port Authority. Look at this lovely young lad who came to work. He's wearing a corduroy blazer and his shirt buttoned down to his chest. And look at the homosexuals enjoying it. <laughs> Some of them pay $20 to have him wear a pink tube top. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that awful. <laughs> uh, Freddie in Philly wondering if that guy was looking at eatabullet.com. He's looking at that lovely young lad. Very nice. Uh, very good.